Okay. Starting now. Go ahead. Sure. I'm uh, Sabneet Singh. I'm the uh, CEO of Gold Bullion International. Okay. And I'm Brian Shepard. I'm head of internal sales here at Gold Bullion International. Okay. So what is Gold Bullion? Uh, so we're. Oh, GBI, shall I say? Sure. So we're a uh, we're a platform that allows investors to purchase, store, and trade physical precious metals. We basically created a way for investors to actually electronically order a physical asset and have it stored and record kept, just like you buy any other asset, a stock or a bond. So you can go to your stock trading account, actually type in a ticker, and buy a bar of gold or silver or whatever metal you like, and have it stored in location of your choice. Um, or you can work with us over the phone, but we've made it as easy as ordering anything else. How is the physical priced? Um, so we, we created, a, I guess it's a bit of our secret sauce, is We've partnered with a number of gold dealers, refiners, even uh, even miners, where every order we get from a client, let's say you came in and said you want $10,000 of gold or a million dollars of gold. That order comes to us, it hits our system, and then we bid it out to a market of dealers. And whatever dealer bids the best price is the dealer we end up working with. So we actually don't own any gold or silver ourselves. We're just a platform that bids it out to this market of dealers. Uh, and that way we're able to take away some of the opaqueness and some of the vagueness that you find in buying an over-the-counter asset and by creating a, just a systematic way to create pricing. Okay, so if I were to put this in other words, you're not a, um, you don't work as a principal in any way whatsoever, no. strictly agency. Strictly agency. It's, it's almost like lending trade, okay. where we, they bid on each order. So does that mean that you will not front run your clients like certain other unnamed banks with the Absolutely. physical in their so, name, I, such I, as I, I, yeah, in Silver fact, our Mint. traders don't even know. <laughs> That's a joke. I'm not yeah, talking about. Well, it's a common question too. Goldman, uh, anybody uh, like that? But none of our our traders don't even know where the transaction is coming from. So mm -hmm. uh, we click, click click a lot of trades electronically, but also over the phone, and the traders just see that on their blotter system that there's a transaction that's being bid out. How long have you been in business? Uh, about three years. And what is your volume, as of we don't average volume over? We don't disclose it publicly, um, but we, we can say that we do believe we're one of the largest physical precious metals provider in the short term that we've been up. Okay. In all fairness, you're the only one that I know of, so that doesn't narrow it down a whole uh, lot. I guess it, 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 you're right. Um, but when people look at physical precious metals, I think they look at the people you see online, retail dealers, things of that nature. Um, so you're right. There's not a proxy. Um, but when we get to the point where we can talk about it publicly, we absolutely will. Okay. What would it take to open up an account? Uh, so there's, there's two ways. You can um, work with one of our partners. So we work with big wealth management firms where you can work through your financial advisor. So if your financial advisor can say, hey, would you like to buy some gold? You'd say, yeah, and then he would actually order it on your existing account. So it would show up on your statement, on your confirmation, just like you're buying anything else. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so that's one way. The other way is uh, for some accounts you can work directly with, with us. So you can call open an account, just like opening up a... Scott Trader and E Trade account, um, and the third way is we're, we're partnering with other firms now who are leveraging our software to offer what we're doing to their clients, so you can work with another a partner firm of ours. Okay, so you wouldn't deal with an investor directly. Sorry. You would not deal with it directly with an investor. We can. We we, can. we have, um, but we prefer to work through our partnership channels. Okay, um, can you give any indication what the friction costs are in the transactions? Uh, they're pretty minimal. Uh, it varies by size. So um, we charge our clients. Uh, and Brian, what's this range for storage fees? Anywhere from fifty to sixty-five basis points per year, approximately per year. Okay. So when you store with us, we bill you to store it and have it insured, um, and that's uh, so it's quite minimal actually. And because we have each dealer bidding on the price, we're able to collapse premiums within each market. Okay. So expenses are actual transaction costs. You take a commission or a capture or spread on the, the trade. Spread, correct, yeah. Okay. You have a spread, you have storage. Yep. You have okay. insurance, which is part and parcel of the storage. The storage, yeah. So we, we our goal is to create make everything very transparent. So you know what price you're getting when you're buying, so you have, you can figure out what your premium is or your um, and then you know what you're gonna pay every year for storage. Okay. And there's store and storage insurance and auditing. So there's no there's no uh, opaqueness about any of it. Is there a physical inspection upon request? Uh, we can coordinate it for, for some clients. We prefer not to because of our, we, we work with non-banking vaulting partners, meaning we work with vaults that are specialized just in vaulting, and they don't like retail people coming in and seeing the gold. Now we can facilitate it. You always have the option to take physical delivery, um, and our vaults are physically audited by a big four accounting firm four times a year. Mm -hmm. So you, there's an independent report saying that your asset is actually there. Not, so you're not trusting us. You're, you're not trusting even our vaulting firm. You're trusting us, our vaulting firm, 
and a big four accounting firm that the assets are actually there. Have you ever been to my blog, Boomba's blog? Have you read it? Yes, I have. Okay, yeah. so you know I'm sort of a smart ass. Yes, absolutely. Okay, MF Global was also audited by a big four yeah. accounting firm. Yeah. Okay, yes. they went bankrupt. Sure. So was Bear Stearns, Lehman. Uh -huh. uh, the yeah, I'd argue this is a little bit different. Okay. It's twofold. So one, our partner firms can come in and see the gold whenever they want. Mm -hmm. So we never restrict a firm or a partner firm to come go see it. So if one of our one of the large institutions that works with us say we want to come in, they come in. It's it, it's their metal. The second thing is we hold title in that client's name. So unlike an MF Global or a Bear Stearns where things are a street name, and they're actually in the client's name. So we. Our firm can't do anything with that metal because it's not ours, it's not on our balance sheet. We can't leverage it, and it's in a non-bank custodian. So we're not storing it in a bank where we can write, deliver, deliver, write a derivative or, a collateral off, or collateralize it. It's just sitting there collecting mm -hmm. dust. Right. Um, so it's, it's a little bit different than a, a bank and financial asset. Now, if you went to a, a, one of the big bullion banks and said, yeah, store my gold in your New York City or London vault, there's absolute, and I'm sure it's audited, there's absolute risk of what you're saying is happening. But when you store it with a non-bank who has no economic incentive to do anything with it but just store it, and when you are using a real asset that we, it's not on our balance sheet and not on our name, you can't really do anything with it. Okay, so tell me what the risks are I'm dealing with, such as, is there any counterparty risk? So, no. The counterparty risk our clients really work with is the firm that they choose to work through. So if, if, they, work through, uh, so if they work through Bank X and buy gold from us, you're trusting your bank that you're, they're actually sending us funds and things like that. But if you're working with our firm, there's we believe we've eliminated all the counterparty risk because nothing is in our name. So if we go bankrupt tomorrow, we don't take the assets that are in the vaults with us down with us. They sit there because they're not on our balance sheet. So creditors can't go after it and things of that nature. Okay. And so I get a certificate of ownership of gold in my name, and I have the, but I don't have the location, the physical location of the asset. Well, you pick a, a, a geography, so New York, London, Zurich, Salt Lake City are the locations we're offering now. Um, and it, it, we have, you know, if you're a client and you really want to come see it, we'll, we'll facilitate that. Okay. Um, but the reason I press that is the primary <coughs> incentive for the small, medium, and uh, just under large investors, say your high net worth, but yeah. not your very high net worth investor, a small family office, the deal in the physical mm -hmm. would be to eliminate the guarantee to become apparent games uh -huh. in dealing with electronic assets such as GLD, etc. Um, they paper over the physical, but it's unlikely they have the capability for full delivery. So in dealing with the physical, but not having access to the physical, you have the same yeah. inherent risk of dealing with a derivative, which is Absolutely. the ETFs. The ETFs are derivatives, no matter which way you look at it, if you do not have mm -hmm. actual physical behind it. So th that's, I'm not trying to be difficult, no, no, but no, no, no. We I'm pressing it. So yeah, you can absolutely visit it. You can have delivery whenever you want. So if you if you say, I want my gold delivered to me, your gold is delivered to you. It, it's your asset. If you say, I have it in your, move it to Zurich, we move it to Zurich for you. Okay. Your bars are your bars and nobody's else, nobody else's. Are they minimum and maximum account sizes? Yeah. So I th what's the minimum for storage? The minimum for storage, depending on retail with us, is, is 250000 Okay. With um, our vaulting partners, with our partners, it's... it's uh, depending on the firm, it's anywhere from 10000 to 25000 So generally around 10000 is the minimum to have it stored with us. If you just want delivery, there's no minimum. There's, there's a $5,000 minimum, but almost Okay, always. one more time. The $250,000 quote was for? Is for working with us directly. Directly, yes. okay. And it's yeah. not yet. Yeah. Right, and through a retail establishment. It, it, it's that, that firm's minimum. So okay, it's I understand. 10, at the lowest I think we have is... You know, five thousand dollars. It's actually it's not up to us. It's the firm that we work with. Okay. So we present no minimum to them. They determine what they want as their minimum. Okay. So, if I were to purchase ten, say ten ounces. Yeah. Uh, request ten ounces, through you or enough to get past your minimum. Sure. Uh, gold is quoted at say seventeen sixty two an ounce. Mm -hmm. Uh, would your quote come in at above or below? Uh, so uh, uh, what type of bar is it? You walk me through a hypothetical. Sure. So it, it, it everything depends on the size of the bar and the location. So mm -hmm. what's unique about our firm is we bid out each order by location by bar. So mm -hmm. there's no, as you know, there's no physical gold price. There's a physical physical gold price by bar. Right. So, uh, in generally the, the the rule of thumb is the smaller the size bar, the higher the premium the bar. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you're buying a one ounce bar of gold, you're paying, a, you're usually able to acquire those for. One to two percent above the spot price of gold. Uh, if you're buying a 400 ounce bar, which is a large bar, you're usually acquiring it for, you know, 10, 20 basis points above spot price. Mm -hmm. So there's a dramatic difference depending on the size of the bar you buy mm -hmm. and the day, time, demand. So 
something like a kilogram bar, which has been in huge demand the last two or three months, you've seen the premiums go up a little bit there because it works off supply and demand. So they trade almost as a separate asset in and of themselves. Okay. One second.